Spencer, you have a quote on your LinkedIn profile. One question I constantly ask myself when crafting a film is this, what is the deepest place I can write from? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the question you need to ask yourself when you're writing. Um, if you want something to really connect with people, you gotta dig deep because you can't expect the audience to feel the same emotions when they watch it on screen if you don't first go through those same emotions in the writing process. Do you ever feel like maybe I should rein it in, it's too much, or do you always err on the side of actually, no, I want someone to feel exactly what I'm feeling, so I don't mind if it just bleeds yeah, just all over the page. put it all out there. I mean, why not, you know? <laughs> like, I, I think some of my heroes have done that, and that's why, that's why I'm um, pushed to do the same thing, to push myself to be more vulnerable, because the most, yeah, the most um, impactful um, pieces of art that I've ever, um, you know, seen or heard or consumed are the ones that are the most honest and the most vulnerable. Um, and so uh, there's an album called The Color Clear by Reflections, and that whole album, the first time I heard it, I was just mind blown with just how personal the whole thing was. And um, I was just shocked at how much I related to all of it and how many of the, how much of the experiences um, that that vocalist Jake Wolf went through that were similar to mine. And um, when I heard that, and, and there's been other ones too, of course, but like just that one, for example, um, it really opened, uh, it just opened the world to me and it made it, um, it made me feel comforted, it made me feel less alone, and so I wanted to do the same for others. Is that a, a metal band or yeah. punk? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're based here in LA? No, nope, they're in Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I actually got to fly out to Minnesota and interview the vocalist on my podcast, and it was it was a dream come true, and it was we had a really great time talking about um, just personal pain and putting putting the pain onto the page, you know, and that is that is what connects with people, and that's why people love um, his band, and that's why people love Space Waves. Um, you know, when you're honest out there, it just, it can't help but resonate and connect with people. So you were a fan of the band first, and then you reached out to them? And yeah. Said, Can I? Wow, yeah. that's yeah, a cool opportunity. Oh yeah, it was amazing, and he's a great guy. I, I flew out to Minnesota for their like reunion show because they were on hi hiatus for a while. So I flew out there and then um, he was a super cool guy. He invited me into his home and we got to record a podcast, got to talk to him for like two and a half hours. Um, and so he's one of my heroes. And so that was an amazing experience. But your movie Space Waves is, is lighter in terms of what you see in the trailer, but you wanted to make it where at the core it was actually much heavier, mm. right? I mean, it's not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is. it is a, it's a kind of a balance between that comedy and drama, like I said. And so it's, um, on the surface, it's just a comedy. But if you are watching it with attentive eyes and you um, connect with the characters, then it is something much deeper, you know? And that second half of the film resonates much more. Um, and so I think, I think we pulled it off with like, with a really good ending and there still is there still is comedy and fun in the second half of the movie, but it just looks a little bit different. And so um, that's just how life is. When you grow up, you know, you're still you're still able to have fun, but it just looks different than when you were in high school, riding around in shopping carts and shooting people with paintballs and stuff. Um, so it's just it's just different. How was it to recreate some of the painful scenes for you in the film? Uh, it was very difficult. Um, specifically the argument scene and then the DVD handoff scene in Space Waves. Um, those were, they were very, they, yeah, I don't know, they were just hard to be in that moment on set because it felt like I was back in that moment, you know, back in high school going through that same friendship breakup or going through the moment where um, the DVD handoff at the end where they're trying to like repair the friendship a little bit. Um, and so, it, yeah, it was emotional and it was emotional for, uh, I would say everyone involved, um, and Andrew Gabriel and Rudy Pankow, um, our two leads, were their friends in real life. And so at the time of filming Space Waves, it was very raw and emotional for them as well because here they are, they they um, went to the same acting class when, when they first got to LA, and so they're super close. Then they're doing this movie together, and they're doing a movie about them 
breaking up and going separate ways and not being, you know, as close of friends anymore. And so it was tough for them as well to kind of go through this and, you know, play pretend that their friendship is ending. So it was it was emotional for them. It was it was emotional for me. Um, but I think I think that's how it should be. You know, it's emotional on set and then it's going to be emotional on screen when people see it later. Did you receive notes back from viewers that their chemistry was great, that yeah. it seemed very true? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think people could see that there was chemistry there and that they're actually friends in real life. Do you care more about the emotional impact of a scene or is making an entertaining movie the goal? <laughs> um, why do we have to choose? How about it's both? <laughs> I would say it has, I mean, it has to be both. It ha yeah, it has to be both. Um, but yeah, I mean, just make it, I say, I mean, make it as emotional and moving as possible and make it as entertaining and fun as possible as well. I mean, those two things aren't mutually exclusive. So I try to do it, um, I try to push it to the limit in every aspect of filmmaking, you know, whether that be the acting or the edit or the sound design, you know, every element of filmmaking is there to elevate the story and to make it the most emotionally impacting as possible and make it the most entertaining, fun, wild ride as possible. And is darkness bad? <laughs> no, we all have it, so everyone can relate to it. What about those that don't want to acknowledge darkness? They're living in a fantasy land. Um, I think if you just walk around, oh, I mean, there's something to trying to be positive, right? And that's that's great. But when I think you can be optimistic to a fault, because sometimes um, I think there's a lot of truth in the rubble and you can learn a lot about yourself and about others and about human nature when you examine the uglier parts of yourself and about humanity and everything. And I think that's where the real, I think that's where the real growth happens. Was there a turning point in the writing process for the screenplay where you couldn't turn back? Like, were you maybe on the fence in the beginning or, or not? No. Oh, never. No, okay. I just, just Spencer's like, never on the fence. No, so. I get very obsessed okay. with my ideas. And it was just, yeah, it was all I thought about for the whole summer. And just one. Well, then from then on out, it was like, i got to make this film. So, Where were you writing it? Um, I was writing it just down here in SoCal where I live. So in college, in between classes, or oh, you said it's summer, so yeah, yeah, I mean, there was a break? Yeah, I mean, just summer break, and then also just, you know, we, I, I, I revised it over the whole year, because we, we had a summer, and I wrote the film, and then we went the whole year doing pre-production, and so I was just kind of revising it that whole time, and then we went and shot it summer 2018. Reflecting on it now, what were the most important parts of the screenwriting process for Space Waves? So some of the most important parts of the screenwriting process would be the dialogue. And so I wanted to really make sure that the dialogue reflected real life. Um, and I wanted to incorporate a lot of the jokes that me and my friends or my friends and I would say to each other. And so um, I tried to put a, a lot of inside jokes into the film and a lot of just um, a lot of things that like an audience watching, they might not necessarily understand what the joke is or whatever, but they're laughing along with it because they see that like, oh, this is just something that the characters have between each other and it builds history and it builds out the world um, when the characters have their own inside jokes and things like that. Um, and another part of the screenwriting process was I really tried to, I, yeah, I really tried to expand the world. I tried to build the world out. So whether that be creating these, um, you know, these fake podcasts that are that are going by on the podcast charts or um, we have this kind of running gag in the film about where's Ruth. And so we had like the the news ticker going across being like this missing person, Ruth, blah, blah, blah. And then in the newspaper, it's like, where's Ruth? And like we just came up with all these funny little Easter eggs and things that like built the world out. And so that was very important to me was just making this world feel very lived in and feel very real and feel a bit larger than life. 